Hi folks, Colin here again, back for another rock and roll guitar lesson. Sorry, I've been a little bit out of action. I've been doing action in other things, so I've been working on my rock and roll guitar masters course with my program and my students. It's going really well, and we're getting lots of people playing rock and roll, and uh, lots of exciting new musicians emerging from this program. And I think there'll be a lot of new rock and roll bands down the line. I hope so anyway. Certainly a few. Uh, so uh, I am going to try and keep my YouTube channel going and I'm sure I will but it might be a little patchy in terms of uploads just for the next month or two because I've got a lot of work to do on my programme and I have to kind of give priority to that really and um, I've got to give priority to my customers. Uh, so this is a request for one of the people on my programme, a chap called Roger who wanted to learn how to play No Particular Place to Go by Chuck Berry. Now this song, it came out in 1964, it was on his album St. Louis to Liverpool, which was the first album that Chuck Berry made that actually made the charts, uh, and it got to number 124, which is not really that fantastic when you consider it's probably one of the greatest rock and roll records ever made in history, but uh, that is just the way that history goes sometimes, so apologies to um, historians. Um, so yeah, this is quite a simple song. It's based on a, a 12 bar blues progression in the key of G and there's a lot of repetitive riffs in it and the, the uh, solo tabbing that out was quite tedious because it's very repetitive but at the same time it's it's absolute genius and uh, great great sort of track to get the hang of because you begin to really get the feel of uh, the Chuck Berry style once you get comfortable with it. Okay folks, I'm going to break it down for you now. Let's get rocking. Okay folks, no particular place to go is a 12 bar in the key of G as we just said and you're going to need to know that shuffle riff. I'm sure you know it by now if you've been watching this channel for any length of time. It's a standard Chuck Berry riff and uh, you're going to have three on the E, five on the A. Play them together, you've got a, a G5 chord. And then we're putting a pinky on for the six. So the six goes on to the seventh fret of the E. And you just move that up a string for the four chord, the C. Back to the one chord, the G. And then up to the uh, five chord, so you're going to be on five on the A and seven on the D. I'm going up to nine on the D. And then down two frets for the four chord. Back to the one chord. Okay, let's look at the lead parts. The introduction is a D augmented chord and it sounds like this. So it's a series of triplets, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one. And uh, basically, if you don't know what a D augmented chord is, or what an augmented chord is, it's like a normal D chord. That's a normal D chord. But uh, you actually raise the, the fifth. So the fifth on a D is an A. And you raise that by a, a semitone, you get a B flat. And that makes that lovely augmented sound. So Chuck's got this riff that's quite uh, distinctive that he uses through the verses, which is based around the second position pentatonic. So you'd be starting with the one here, but you te just tend to use the top bit, which is what people often refer to as the BB King box. So you just slide, so you're sliding from into sort of seven on the G, and you're picking the, the six on the B. Then you're just moving back into first position, so you're picking five and five, and then three and three, five on the D. And it kind of repeats like that a couple of times. Now when it goes to the C, instead of going to the to the one, it sort of goes to the, the C, funnily enough. So that's the fifth fret on the the uh, the G and the, 
the B. So the riff would sound like this. And then it would just revert back to the first riff. And then over the D it goes. Which is almost the same. So six on the, the B, seven on the G. Five and five. Three, three. And back to the first riff. Okay folks, the first solo goes like this. So what's happening, we're sliding up to basically a G triad. So you've got your D shape, take it up to the 7th fret and just use the top two strings. And what we're doing, is we're just sort of doing triplets and we're sliding up on every sort of second beat, well the first, sorry, first and the third beat effectively. One, two, three, 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 one, two, three. And then you so you're you're seven on the D, six on the B. And sometimes you just drop down to three and three. Which is just kind of G as well always. So that's G and that's D. C we're playing that sort of part of a C triad so it's five on the, the G and five on the B then we'll go to three on the B four on the G one on the B two on the G four on the G five on the D so let's just do what we've done so far Finishes off with this riff. So what's happening? We're playing three and three in the top. Two sets of triplets, then five, uh, five in the B and G, and then three on the B and G. Five on the D, and then three five three on those two again. Let's just play that. And repeat it. And we're going to bend six on the E, five on the B. Three times, just a little curly wee bend. Then three, five, three on the top two. Five, three on the B and the G. And five on the D twice. So we do the whole thing. Okay folks, uh, for the second solo you're just going to start off the same as you started off with the first solo. So we're playing these G sort of uh, double stops. And then we're going to play a G chord. No, that's right. So we're just using... Uh, First two fingers to form the bottom half of the G, so three and three in the top two, four on the G, and our ring finger comes to five on the D. And we 
we're playing that five and five with a ring finger as well. Finish on the five on the D, which is the root. Okay, the next lick is just a series of double stops, uh, three and three in the top two strings, but you start off, you play four, then five on the, the G, just to walk into it. Just like that. And then we're going to come into, when we change the chord, we're going to play six on the uh, high E and five on the B. A series of triplets again, and we're just going to play them repetitively and drop down to three and three like this. So you do that twice. And then we're going to play this. Which is bending five on the, the G and playing three on the B. And going 5 3 on the G, finish on 5 on the D. And we're going to play um, a series of uh, threes on the top two strings. And then we're playing 5 3 on the, the G, 5 on the D, and then top 3 in the top two, repeating that. just playing the threes and threes and we're going to go back to that six on the E five on the B and we're going to walk up five on the D three on the G that's the next riff so we'll go five on the D three on the, the G push up to the 5 and release it on the G and then I just play an open G now he maybe does go a 5 on a D, I don't know, but same note but I just find that easier, just picking that, that open G then we're going to go 5 on the D 3 on the, the G and then we're going to go a series of 5s like that, so the whole Lick goes like this. One more time. And then we're going to go back to that lick where we start on the four, on the G. Then we're going to finish off, we're just going to play a run of threes on the top two strings. So we're doing six on the top E, five on the B, and then three, five, three, five, three on the B and G. Then we're going to walk down five on the D twice, three on the D twice, two on the D twice. One and D ties open, and we're going to play a G7, a G sharp 7. Slide it down. Okay, folks, I hope you find that helpful. I'll put the tab download in the description below. Thank you very much for tuning in, and I hope you're uh, going to enjoy that lesson. Uh, if you're interested in working with me uh, to help you fast track your rock and roll guitar journey, please. Uh, click on the link below, uh, which takes you to a webinar which I outline the five steps to playing rock and roll guitar fast. And it's a very effective method and I'm getting lots of great rock and rollers out of it. So uh, yeah, please consider that if you're serious about your rocking. Uh, by all means, keep tuning in folks, keep subscribing and keep rocking. I'll see you next time.